Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 4 of the chapter States of Matter. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the Boyle's Law. As I told you in the previous video, that there are four variables in the properties of a gas. The first is the number of moles, pressure, temperature and volume. And when two of these are kept constant, the other two develop a relationship between each other. And this relationship is written in the form of a law. The first law here is known as the Boyle's law. And as I gave you an overview in the previous video, that the other laws are the Charles, Charles law, the Avogadro's law and the Gay-Lussac's law. And a combined gas law which is known as the ideal gas equation. So what is the Boyle's law? The Boyle's law was given by uh, a scientist called Robert Boyle. And the statement of this law is that at constant temperature, the pressure of a fixed amount of gas, fixed amount means the number of moles are fixed, varies inversely with its volume. If you look at the statement, there are two things that are kept constant out of these four properties. The first is temperature and the other is the number of moles. So when you have a fixed temperature and for a fixed number of moles of a gas or, or for a fixed quantity of a gas, the pressure varies inversely with its volume. The pressure is inversely proportional which means that if the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. If volume goes up, pressure goes down. In other words, if you find a product between the two, that is pressure into volume, it should remain the same because if the pressure is 2 and volume is 4, the product is 2 and 4. But if volume becomes 2, pressure becomes 4, which means the product of 2 into 4 remains the same. So in other words, the product of pressure and volume should be the same or it is constant. And when is it constant? When you have a fixed amount of a gas and when you are measuring it at a certain temperature, you're not changing the temperature while you are doing these measurements. So the condition for Boyle's law to be applicable is that the temperature and the number of moles of gas should be fixed, right? So from this we understand how do we use the Boyle's law that if you have a fixed amount of a gas and at a fixed temperature the pressure is P1 and the volume is V1 and you either expand or contract gas and change the pressure from P1 to P2 then the volume V1 would change to V2 in such a way that the product remains the same. The product of pressure and volume remains the same. Just as I told you that if the pressure is 2 and volume is 4 and you make the pressure 4, the volume automatically becomes 2. Why? Because 2 into 4 and 4 into 2 should be the same. The product of P1, V1 should be equal to the product of P2 and V2. So this is Boyle's law. How do we physically understand this? I told you about the syringe. That if you, if, if you notice there is no medicine in the syringe and you have an empty syringe which has air in it and you start putting the, pushing the piston inside, what happens? Gases are highly compressible, you have gas in it and let us say the syringe is sealed on the, uh, on the side of the needle. So when you push the piston into the syringe, this is, let us say that this is the volume, in, this is a, a jar which has a piston in it, just like a syringe, and the volume of the gas occupied here is two times, is equal to, let us say, uh, two volumes. And we push the piston down so that the volume now reduces to, reduces to one volume. If this is two volumes, then this has been reduced to one volume. The volume here is two volumes, and if we push the piston down to half, it becomes one volume, right? What is the pressure of a gas? The pressure of a gas is the number of molecules which are hitting the walls of the container. So I have counted here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten uh, molecules that I've shown you here. And these are ten molecules which are occupying twice the volume. And when we push the piston down, the same 10 molecules are now occupying half the space. So the pressure, what would happen to it? Whatever number of bombardments were there for twice the volume, wouldn't the number of bombardments in half that volume double? The number of bombardments of the molecules, the number of times the molecules hit the walls would double. 
Why would this happen? Because the number of molecules is more, obviously they would hit the walls more frequently. So we find that when we decreased the volume, the pressure became, or when we decreased the volume to half, the pressure became double, right? This is Boyle's law, that as you increase the pressure, the volume goes down, the reverse of it, you decrease the pressure, pull the piston up, the volume now, the same number of molecules are now occupying two volumes, so the number of bombardments will become half or the pressure will become half. So this, this Boyle's law also gives us an indication of how compressible gases are because you can go on increasing the pressure. So it shows how compressible gases are and therefore Boyle's law is also sometimes called the law of compressibility or the compressibility law. Let us now move to these graphs that we plot. If we plot a graph between pressure in atmosphere and volume in decimeter cubes, that is liters, for a gas, and we, what are the conditions under which we have to plot this graph? The, according to Boyle's law, it, the number of moles of the gas should be fixed and the temperature should be constant. So if the number of moles is fixed and the temperature is constant, let us say I take 200 Kelvin is my temperature and I start plotting the graph that the pressure initially was let us say 4. If we say 1 atmosphere, 2 atmosphere, 3 atmosphere, 4 atmospheres. So the pressure was 4, I reduce the pressure to 3, 2, 1 and as I reduce the pressure what do I see? The shift of the curve, the volume increases, the volume is increasing in this direction. So how is the curve moving? As you, decrease, as you decrease the pressure, the volume increases. And what is constant? The temperature here for this, this first curve is 200 Kelvin. At 300, for 400 Kelvin, I again get a similar curve, only it does not coincide with this one. It is a little higher than this. The pressure for 400 Kelvin may be here, uh, sorry, the volume is here, is greater at a higher temperature. But the pressure is the same and as I reduce the pressure, I see a similar shape of the curve. That as I keep decreasing the pressure, the volume keeps on increasing. At 600 Kelvin also I obtain a similar curve. Now such curves which have a constant temperature, curves which are plotted at constant temperature are called isotherms. Therm means temperature and iso means constant. A curve that is drawn at constant temperature would be an isotherm. So these three lines are showing you isotherms. They are different isotherms which have been plotted at different temperatures. And why iso? Because one curve has been plotted at one fixed temperature. And that is when the Boyle's law is applicable. For a fixed amount of gas, you are decreasing the pressure or increasing the pressure. As you go on increasing the pressure, the volume goes on decreasing. Either way, you can understand this. On the other hand, if I plot a graph between pressure and the inverse of volume, what does the Boyle's law say? That the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to its volume. So pressure, you could say, is directly proportional to 1 upon V. Inversely proportional is in other words, it is proportional to 1 upon V. Instead of being proportional to V, it is proportional to 1 upon V. So since it's inversely, it's directly proportional to 1 upon V, as you increase the pressure, the value of 1 upon V, the, the reciprocal of V would also increase, right? So we find that in this case, the isotherms that are obtained would be straight lines. That is, as pressure increases, volume, the inverse of volume also increases. So this is the shape of the isotherms that we obtain when we plot a graph between pressure and 1 upon V. Also, we know that what is the density of a substance? The density of a substance is mass per unit volume or mass upon volume. So the density of a gas would also be, density would be equal to mass upon volume. But if the gas is following Boyle's law, in other words, if we are talking of a fixed amount of a gas, and if we are talking of the, of the temperature being fixed and Boyle's law is applicable, then a relationship can be made uh, using the density also. We already know, according to Boyle's law, for a fixed amount of gas at a fixed temperature, PV is constant. 
So PV is equal to K. So we can get the value of V from this. How would you get the value of V? V would become B equal to K upon P. So now, considering that the number of moles is fixed and temperature is fixed, we can plot this V from the Boyle's law equation into the equation of density. Right? Density in under all conditions is mass upon volume. So you can apply this value of volume when Boyle's law conditions exist. That is when there is a fixed number of moles for at a fixed temperature. So what would density become equal to? It would be equal to mass upon volume. Volume becomes K upon P. Now when we talk of K, K is a constant. It was the constant of proportionality. So if it is constant and pressure is whatever pressure, mass of a fixed amount of gas, if you have a fixed number of moles of a gas, the mass becomes fixed. In other words, when we plot the value of, when we uh, substitute the value of V in this equation, both the mass and K are constant under these conditions. So we could say that this is a constant and we represent it by a K bar, right? So density becomes equal to K bar, uh, K dash, P, right? Density would be equal to K dash. This K, this constant, let us say for Boyle's law, let us take the constant as K1. Because when we take Charles law, we make it K2, we make it K3 because we'll be using them or all of them later. So K1 uh, here. Now M upon K1, we've given it the value of K dash. So now this equation tells us that under the conditions of Boyle's law, that is when you have constant temperature and a fixed number of moles of a gas under these conditions density is directly proportional to to pressure right so this was Boyle's law let us now solve a problem to make the concept clear and then in the next video we'll do more problems on Boyle's law let me just solve one problem for you to just explain this a little better to you let us solve this question to understand Boyle's law better a balloon is filled with hydrogen at room temperature. It will burst if pressure exceeds 0.2 bar. If at 1 bar pressure, the gas occupies 2.27 liter volume, up to what volume can the balloon be expanded? We are filling balloon with hydrogen and the balloon is expanding. So sometimes, you know, students get confused that when you're filling up air in a balloon, the balloon is expanding and at the same time, the pressure is increasing. So why, how would Boyle's law be applicable under this situation? Boyle's law would not be applicable to it under that situation till the balloon is being filled. Why? Because although the temperature is constant, you are filling air into the balloon, which means you are changing the number of moles. So the Boyle's law here would be applicable only when the balloon has been filled up completely to what pressure to 0.2 bar. When it has been filled up to 0.2 bar, now if you add more molecules, that is if pressure exceeds 0.2 bar, the balloon would burst. So where does the Boyle's law come into play? When the pressure is 0.2 bar and the balloon has not bursted, just when that fills up to 0.2 bar, that is the point where the number of moles of the gas should become fixed, right? So for those number of moles of the gas at room temperature, which is a fixed temperature, now there can be a relationship between pressure and volume. So now we are considering that the number of moles is equal to the uh, number of moles that would be there at 0.2 bar at room temperature, right? So um, the number of moles of that gas is, 0. Point, uh, is N, let us say N, and the pressure is 0.2 bar. The question is that this same gas if the pressure was one bar for the same number of moles that is n if the pressure was one bar and the wall it would occupy a volume of 2.27 liters so we can say that one bar is pressure one p1 is one bar 2.27 would be v1 
2.27 liters, right? P1 is 1 bar and V1 is 2.27 liters and what is P2? P2 is 0.2 bar and you've been asked V2, right? What, up to what volume can the balloon be expanded? What would be the volume of the balloon when the pressure is 0.2 bar? That is just before it bursts, what would be the volume of the balloon? So now the Boyle's law would be applicable. The number of moles is fixed because just before it bursts, that's the maximum number of molecules that you could add to the balloon. And the temperature is room temperature. So now the relationship P1, V1 is equal to P2V2 would be applicable. So P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. P1 is 1 bar and V1 is 2.27 liters. And you've been asked V2 is equal to P2 is 0.2 bar into V2. So if you rearrange this, what would V2 be equal to? V2 would be equal to 1 bar into 2.27 liters upon 0.2 bar, right? Now the bar and bar get cancelled. So this shows that you plugged in the right values. So your answer, you are looking for volume, therefore your answer should be in liters, right? It should be in liters. The bar should cancel out. So this shows we plugged in the right value and therefore this would be which would be equal to 2.27 upon 0.2 liters and this would come to be equal to 11.35 liters 11.35 liters right so v2 is 11.35 liters in other words the balloon can be expanded to a volume of 11.35 liters. So, if you really look at this, is it telling us, how is it uh, this question explaining the Boyle's law? We know that the P1, now we have calculated V2, right? V2 is 11.35 liters. If P1 was 1 bar, P1 was changed to P2, which is lesser. So, 1 bar is more than 0.2 bar, so whatever is the volume at 1 bar, what should the volume be at, at 0.2 bar? If pressure decreases, volume should increase. The volume was 2.27, pressure decreased and volume increased to 11.35. So solving this problem also shows us that yes, there is a relationship between the inverse relationship between pressure and volume exists, which is the Boyle's law. Right? It also verifies that the value that you've got is right. So this was Boyle's Law. In the next video, we are going to practice some problems based on Boyle's Law. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and recommend it to your friends. Subscribe to my channel and share the videos with all your friends. And please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you and bye-bye.